10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go for main engine start, main engine start, 2, 1. Hey everybody, it's me again, Impending Rival, and I'm talking about the most recent show from Marvel that is currently on Netflix. And after watching a few episodes of it, I'm sure it's... Pr and I'm actually really invested in it. And that show is... Daredevil. And, you know, I think you know the, the backstory of Daredevil. You know, he gets shot by a chemical shed that turns... that makes him blind and able to hear everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it's a really good show. And, uh, I'm not gonna review each episode side by side, you know, episode by episode, I'm just gonna, you know, because I got a lot of busy things going on around here, you know, I'm not gonna review each episode, episode by episode, I will definitely, however, I will definitely review the pilot, and I'll say right off the bat that the pilot is really, really good, the pilot is actually one of my favorite pilots to a TV show. Not only is the not only is the pacing really great, but the characters are easy to latch on to. You care about what's going on. You know, it's not like a generic setup for next episode. You know, Kingpin. You know, they don't they don't even show Kingpin. You know what's even better? They don't they don't even bring up Electra Nachos, which is so awesome because that's what made that Daredevil movie so you know abysmal. And well, yes, I may like that film for what it is. It's enjoyable, and and I highly recommend you watch the director's cut if you don't like the original cut. But still, the the film Ben Affleck is is a cluster. It's a clusterfuck. Okay, it it it, it has like a bunch of stories that that just don't go together. We got Electra Nachos that was from Frank Miller, Bullseye, Kingpin, the origin story. Well, of course, because it's, it's the first in the movies. Um, I'm kind of sidetracking, but I'm just going to get some backstory out of the way. But that movie just... Well, for what it was, it was fine for its time, but it hasn't aged well. But this show is a completely different story. It's a complete 180 um, approach. And I think they did a great job with, this, with, this, with these few episodes. I haven't watched all 12. And I found it really amazing that they were managed to release the entire season on Netflix because it's not like it's not like cheeky like in uh, like CW they like you know like and this is a pattern for most TV shows like every time they just really they just release each episode episode uh, week each Tuesday like to say the Flash and Agents of Shield they release those episodes every Tuesday at night on the CW. And on ABC. And I'll say right off the bat, um, I'm going to compare this show to Gotham. First, just because they're both Batman and Daredevil both have their own kind of dark, edgy kind of edge to it. I think Daredevil is a, is a way better show than Gotham. But then again, I'm getting sidetracked. I just wanted to get my thoughts. Um, before I get even more deeper into my thoughts on the latter... I want to talk about the story of the pilot, and I thought it was really intriguing, so here we, here it is. Um, right off the bat, we start with the kid, Matt Murdock, you know, having an accident. There's, there's a bunch of, it's a car, it's a traffic jam. And then his father, Jack Murdock, who's eventually coming to become a boxing player, a boxing match, um, he sees that the kid, that, that Matt got into a got into an accident with the chemical shed that got his eyes blind, you know. And there's this whole subplot that was that wasn't rushed, and and that was the best part of the whole episode. It has that whole twist with this uh, lesser known character named Karen Page that I'm not sure any of you are familiar with. I'm not very familiar with her either. Cause read the comics as much as the next guy, because most comic book aficionados know who these characters are. They, they know, they don't just know Electra Nachos, or Bullseye, or 
Kingpin because they've watched the original 2003 film. They know it because they've watched, they read the comic, The Man Without Fear. They read all that stuff, you know. So, yeah, the, the pilot does a really good job at illustrating that kind of, you know, that, that this character. And it's the pilot, you know, and I thought, and this was a completely original idea because usually the pilots just show the, uh, uh, completely, like, the first point of, first person point of view, as in, like, Matt Murdock, you know, him striving to be a better person, you know, him becoming the, the man without fear, the criminal, the, sorry, the vigilante that's, that's said to save, or, or save Hell's Kitchen from, from further terrorism, um, and his costume, I like the design of the costume, it don't go directly for the Frank Miller, you know, Joe Quesada artwork, they go for the, kind of like in the Incredible Hulk with Lo Ferrigno, I don't remember what it's called, but with the Incredible Hulk, there was this thing in, in 19, in the, in the 80s, 1987, it, he had a crossover with Daredevil, it reminded me of that, like, he had that ninja outfit. And, except there's a lot darker here, and I'm very happy they went for that approach, because it's kind of like, like, leading you, it's kind of like showing build-up for what's to come, because they already showed images on comicbookmovie.com that he's wearing that, about him in the red outfit that we know and love from the original movie, from the comics, and I'm glad that they're, they're building up to that, I'm glad they're the hey having him the black outfit it's like it's like the cape show if you don't know what the cape is it's a it's a very short lived show it's like that show just done right basically um so yeah they have that design it's brilliant it, they do that very well um uh i thought that foggy nelson and this is kind of just me nitpicking i thought he was like a shorter version of harvey bullock from gotham you know he was a shorter you know, Don, Donald, Lo, Donald Logue, that's the actor's name, because he, because Foggy Nelson, I don't know the, the actual actor's name, but to me, that occurred to me, because I've always thought that Foggy Nelson was a shorter, um, skinnier version of Harvey Bullock, but I'm just nitpicking. And another thing that really, that really intrigued me, is that Carrie, is that the, the, the show has, like, this trio of characters, like, like, there he has their Luke, Han, and Leia. Like, you know, Luke is is obviously Matt Murdock. Han is Foggy. And Leia is Karen Page. You know, they had to rescue her from getting, you know, hunted by these assassins, by these criminals that are after her. Because she was, uh, she killed this waiter, this man that she had a drink with. Um, and had, like, the, like this little debate with. So she ended up... So it was led to believe that she killed him, so what Matt and Foggy Nelson her had to investigate on the situation to get it resolved. And because it did get resolved, the trio uh, was created so we could prevent Karen Page from getting more, you know, getting in further trouble by the criminals, by the, by the thiefy by the feisty criminals of Hell's Kitchen. And that's really what intrigued me about this show. That's a big, big portion of what I like about this show. They show him, and at first I feel like he was a lost person, like a lost puppy, because he seemed to like uh, this girl, Lara from Man of Steel, the actress. I forget his, her character's name in the, in the show. But he seems to like her. And there's this one really gruesome scene that really... Uh, exemplifies his his darker edge where one of his people where one of his henchmen uh tries to inter antagonize her and then kingpin uh opens the freaking door and slams it on the dude's head what the f what the f you know it shows that kingpin's darker edge he's not just in love with lara um for man of seal he's not just in love with lara he really is that that crime lord of Hell's Kitchen. He wants this criminal. He wants this black mask vigilante dead. And that shows that he, you know, 
and I find it that he's actually not a criminal, in my opinion, and I think that's what this show's going for. I don't feel like Kingpin's a villain. I feel like he's kind of like the police. They want they want this masked vigilante down. They want him dead. But Kingpin's actions make him out as said criminal. I feel like, you know, Wilson Fisk is a, is a, actually part of the police. No, no, he's not a police. He's a criminal, but of course. But he's the crime lord of King... He's the crime lord of Hell's Kitchen. But his, but his actions feel like a... Like a DA of police. Like Harvey Dent, you know, trying to find this Batman person and take him down for justice. You know, justice is served, that kind of model. That kind of model that was used a lot in the Bat the Earth movie. Justice is served. And I give it a 9 out of 10. And this is Infinity Marvel saying, uh, toodles.